podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7. Blueberry. This podcast is a member of the Blueberry Network. Blueberry. No ease. That's blueberry, B L U B R R Y. Dot com. Blueberry dot com. This podcast is a proud member of the Lamb Podcasting Network. Find the network at largeassmovieblogs.com. The Big G, Tokyo Town, Stomp Down. It's day seven. Out of 31 days of Godzilla, as we celebrate Big G's Tokyo Town Stop Down, I'm T.C. Kirkham. I'm Kim Brown. Brought to you by Subject Cinema, Kaiju Corner on Patreon, and East Cinema One. Yep. And today, we're going to the beach. We're going to the beach. I don't want to go to the beach. I mean, I don't have enough butter to cover that one. Yeah, you would need a lot of bronze butter. <laughs> I mean, it's not... Teenagers from outer space, for Pete's sake, but still. No. Um, this uh, it's on, on, one of the worst case of crabs you'll ever see. It's not a crab. I, it's I know. A it's lobster. A, I know. It's well. Well, yes, but saying one of the worst case of lobsters you'll ever see doesn't make any damn sense. So there. Okay. All righty then. Just settle down. Um, movie yeah. number seven in in the Godzilla Showa series that we are covering. Uh, was released in uh, Japan in December 1966, made its way to America as a straight-to-TV movie mm-hmm. in 1968. It is Ebera, Horror of the Deep, known in America as Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. It was the first of several Godzilla movies to be featured on Mystery Science Theater 3000 yes, during the was, show's second season. Yep, it was episode 13. That tells you exactly what the quality of this film is. Well, c- well wait, whoa, <laughs> whoa! That wasn't nice. It was episode 13 of season two. Well, it's not the Gamera movies that they did a ton of. Would you please stop hating on Gamera? Gamera is a friend to children everywhere. (laughs) I like the Gamera. And Pikachu's Pika. (laughs) You know, you're getting really weird about this. I could bring Hellcow into the conversation. Yes, I thought. Anyway, please please proceed. Don't. (laughs) <laughs> if I haven't mentioned it enough, world, I am so sorry that I ever introduced <laughs> him to the character of Hell Cow. I will regret that. Hell for a- Cow. I just I- like the way it's, it rolls off the tongue. Hell Cow. It's a vampire cow. For- <clears throat> I can't believe I just used that in a sentence. That's just... <laughs> wow. Uh, anyway. Well, it could be uh- worse. It could be a vampire Pikachu. Then we could have help. <laughs> <laughs> I've crossed an episode... <laughs> Help you. <laughs> you need more help than medical science can provide. You Thank know that. You. you know that, right? <laughs> Good grief, you're ill. Um, okay. <coughs> so, we are still in the Showa series. As you mentioned, it is the seventh film um, directed by Jun Fukuda. Um, yeah, we're into the second team here. Yep. The second string team. Yeah. As they are described by Toho Films. Uh, yeah, and music well, they by know Masaru they made Asado. him, so that's you know. Yeah. So the story of Ebera Horror of the Deep goes thusly: um, you have a young man named Yata who is lost at sea, um, which tends to happen when you live on an island. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of ocean around. It tends to. Happen you know what to do when they want to get his attention? How they want to yell his name? Yada yada yada. <laughs> Whatever you're drinking, (laughs) stop. Stop drinking it right now. I'm not drinking anything. Maybe you ought to. Um, His brother, Ryota, is desperate to find him because it's his brother. So he steals a yacht. Um, Yeah, that's a good idea. Yes. (laughs) Okay. Um, Power boat? Something that would go quickly? No, screw that. We're going to steal a yacht. Along with uh, two of his friends, and they also have a bank robber with them. I Why? Love, because it's a Japanese movie, okay. don't ask. So they wind up, they're out at sea, and they're searching for Yata, but the problem is they find something else that is not Yata. They find... Dinner! A, yeah, you remember all this? You remember all the seafood you've ever had in your life? This is revenge for it. <laughs> they are besieged by a giant lobster. 
probably the only sentence that is even dumber than vampire cow. Um, they are attacked by a an enormous lobster, which is called Ebera, and they wind up, um, you know, they wind up on the shore of this island called Lechi Island. And as it turns out, there are other people on the island right now as well, but the problem is they're bad people. Um, they are from a, a terrorist organization called uh, the Red Bamboo, which is apparently frightening for some reason. I don't know why, but whatever. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it doesn't really roll off the tongue like Hydra or something like that, but I digress. Right. Um, they are manufacturing heavy yeah, water. Yeah, Red Bamboo doesn't have the same kind No, of, uh, yeah. not at all. No, no, no. No, it's not even up there with Cobra, for crying out loud. Um, so they're, they're manufacturing heavy water. Um, I don't know what this term it's means. U- it's used in nuclear weapons. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Cause I've heard this term before, and I'm always like, I don't know what that means, and if I ask it, I'm going to look stupid. So no, it looks, it's used mostly in nuclear weapons. And they've, they're also using uh, this chemical that they create yeah. that keeps Ebera from attacking them because lobsters go on land a whole lot. Well, they're they're well, crustaceans. They can go over. Well, know. they can, I suppose. I don't. You don't usually see them do that. Not lobsters, but crabs. You do. When they're yeah, the crabs do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and well, it's also probably to keep them at bay when they're in the water and the boats and stuff. They just spray the stuff around, never or leaves them alone. Yeah. So the thing is, these people who, as we've mentioned, they're terrorists, so they're bad people, and they're even worse people because they've enslaved some so some of the natives from another island nearby they've conscripted these people to work for them uh-huh um, what the, island would that be that would be infant island oh dear <gasps> the plot thickens isn't infant island where mothra lives give yourself a cookie Ooh. Um, so the thing is mothra is no longer a larva she's now a full-grown giant moth again again um i don't know how long it takes for them she she's uh, she is a moth now but she's apparently not awake they, they're waiting for her to Awaken. rise from her slumber and come and save them. Mm-hmm. Why not? Uh, well, that's because they're good people, to her. If people believe bunnies can deliver eggs this time of year, I guess a giant moth saving you is not too out of the question. Um, so, Ryota and his friends obviously don't want to be caught by the red bamboo pe- the terrorists because they'll be killed. Um, and they wind up being aided by a native girl named Dio. And she's trying to help them, and what? What nothing, now? Nothing, nothing, nothing. What did I do no, now? not you. I'm just... If you start singing that song from Slumdog Millionaire, I'm going to slap you. No, I was going for Harry Belafonte anyway, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, good grief. So, as it turns out, there's more to this island than meets the eye, as in they find Godzilla is also on this island taking a nap. Dun, dun, dun! Well, I hope you don't do that. You'll wake him up. <laughs> and... Goodness knows, a cranky Godzilla is not something anybody needs. So he's. I don't a- think dramatic chipmunk is going to wake uh, the Godzilla up. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> he's in a ca- he's in a uh, a cavern that's on the side of one of the cliffs, and he's just vegging out. Um, so they decide what they're going to do is they're going to obviously they they have to get off the island definitely, but before they get off the island, they're going to defeat the terrorists because. They're a decent bunch of people. They don't want terrorists running around. So they decide they're going to use a lightning rod that they make because MacGyver's not the only person out there that can make stuff out of nothing. Um, And they use the lightning rod to wake Godzilla up. Why? Because, well, um, because it'd be a damn slow movie if they didn't. Um, Okay. Be a damn short movie if they didn't. It's not very long anyway. It's not even ninety minutes. Um, but I think they think that I think their thing is if they wake up Godzilla, Godzilla's going to go on a rampage because that's what he does. And you know the red bo- the red bamboo people will be all like, oh, we have to attack him and all this stuff of that. They're probably hoping Godzilla will kill a whole bunch of them and wreck their stuff because again, that's what Godzilla does. Yeah. Um. So Godzilla wakes up and surprise to nobody is cranky and he winds up getting in a fight with Ebera and Ebera manages to get away. Now, you think that would be enough for one movie. Oh no. Uh Godzilla then winds up getting attacked by a giant condor called Okondoru. And so they have this big fight and Okondoru is slightly less stupid looking than the giant claw. Slightly. That's saying a lot. You it's, know. it's it's not. 
I should. I, I'm being unkind. El Condor is not that bad looking because ain't nothing that bad looking. <laughs> but Godzilla sings singes the hell out of him, and um, he's also attacked by a bunch of fighter jets from the Red Bamboo Terror Squad, and he blows them up. They have their own fighter jets. Wow, well, they're, they're terrorists. You yeah, know. but most terrorists don't have their own fighter jets. Most terrorists don't have their own friggin' island either. Oh, well, that's true. Okay. And so, except God- in the movies. Yeah, except in the movies. So Godzilla winds up destroying the jets and also destroying Okondoru. You know, mm. it's missing something. Most evil lairs by bad guys in movies on islands have a volcano. This one doesn't seem to have one. Um, no. You know, Doctor Evil has a volcano. A couple of the Bond villains had a volcano. Yeah. They, they don't really. They don't know where's the volcano. We're getting to the explosion. Count- yeah, but the explosion's not the volcano. It's not a volcanic explosion. It's an a, it's an explosion. Cool your jets. We're not there yet. So pink. Uh, so like I mentioned, Godzilla destroys Okondoru. So now you've got this big dead turkey. Thanksgiving for <laughs> Thanksgiving three sixty five. That is very disrespectful. Condors are beautiful animals. Oh well, yeah, that's true. Well, turkeys are ugly. I'm sorry, they are. They are just really. I'm ugly. sure turkeys are very attracted to other turkeys. I'm sure, the turkeys, yes, not to humans. Don't be species centric. I'm not being species centric. Um, anyway, so they find Yata. As it turns out, he's been a prisoner on the island the whole time because <laughs> continuity. And they wind Which up... normally isn't a strong suit for these movies, well, interestingly. No, I don't think that's fair. A lot of these movies, you have threads that go through the whole thing. Yeah, like but they're Mothra tiny. and all that stuff. What? They're tiny, though. Well, hmm. um, so they find Yata, who's alive, yay. They find the, you know, the other natives that have been captured, and they free them, yay. And Godzilla, as I mentioned, doing what he does best, is like... Mm, stomp, stomp, stomp. Yeah, stomp, stomp, trash, wreck, destroy. Um... He winds up smashing it. The problem is that while all of this smashing and destroying is actually working out for the humans' advantage, except the bad humans and they're terrorists, so screw them. Um, the problem is one of the towers that Godzilla winds up trashing, yeah, that's the tower that's got the self-destruct button in it. Because all evil uh, layers need to, because all evil layers need to have one. Yeah. So, um, there's going to be a nuclear explosion. Now, see, fine. Now there's going to be an explosion. Are you happy now? No, it's not a volcano. Volcano. No, it's worse. To, it's not that... supposed to explode. It's supposed to, it's supposed to erupt. Anyway. Anyway. Nuclear explosion is going to blow the smithereens out of everything. Well, yeah. Volcanoes uh, can rebuild themselves. Okay, that's fair. Okay? That's fair. Um, so Godzilla winds Although up... Then all of them can sing. For those of you who are going, what the hell is he talking about? That's in reference to the short lava from Inside Out, which if you haven't seen it, I recommend you do bring <laughs> bring tissues. Um, so back to the movie. Oh. Thank you. Um, Godzilla winds up getting in another fight with Ebera, and this time this gets real personal because Godzilla rips off one of Ebera's claws. Dinner! And then promptly gets out a giant tub of drawn butter and ties on a napkin, and no, he doesn't. I wish. Ooh. <laughs> Numb. Honey, um, I'm pretty sure the giant lobsters are radiated. I'm pretty sure if you ate that, you wouldn't ever be able to have oh, kids yeah. or anything else. Oh, yeah. Um, so I don't know though. I might grow giant like the like the like the bugs in the beginning of the end when they ate the irradiated grain. They grew huge. Maybe I could become the amazing colossal man. Oh yeah, because that ended up well for him. Yeah, but that was from an external. Can sorry, we get not, back to the oh, movie, please? Sorry, okay. So Godzilla, once again, beats the living crap out of Eb- Ebera because as a giant monster, Ebera kind of sucks. And <laughs> so, sorry. I'm sorry. There it is. Um, and as I mentioned, Godzilla rips off one of his claws and Ebera goes into the water and is basically like, fine, I'll leave. Um, <laughs> the natives are all like, Mothra's going to come save us. Mothra's going to come save us. And Mothra actually shows up, amazingly enough. The problem is that this is another, this film kind of seems to vacillate between whether or not Godzilla is a hero or a pain in the ass. Because. He's Deadpool in this movie. Now we've got Godzilla being a pain in the ass. Because Mothra shows up and is all like, oh, I'm here to save my people. And Godzilla's like, ooh, another monster. I'm going to fight that. And Mothra's all like, F you, I'm trying to save my people. Get off me. You know, it's like, stop bothering me. And. 
No, Mos- Mothra doesn't seem to have much problem with Godzilla no, normally. She's a goddess, hello. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, he might be Godzilla, but she's a goddess. I so know. okay. She she manages to finally be like, all right, I've had enough of your tomfoolery. Go to your room. And <clears throat> pushes Godzilla into the water. And man, the people all gather in a net. So now you actually have a butterfly capturing people in a net. That's just funny. Even though it's a moth. I know. Shut up. Um, Godzilla gets manages to swim away from the island right before the island goes boom. So Godzilla's okay, Mothra's okay, all the people are okay, everybody's okay except the terrorists, and they're terrorists, so screw them. The end. Well, that was very not, not very nice to the terrorists. <laughs> they're terrorists. What's your problem? They were sl- enslaving people. Shut up. Okay. Uh, this movie stars Akira. Takarada, who did a number of these films. Yes. He also did uh, King Kong Escapes, which is that thing with Doctor Who. Yes. Um, and uh, Doctor H-U-I, who, no TARDIS Who. And no. uh, a number of other films. Um, be, but he was most closely associated with the Godzilla films. He did a number of them. So um, this was not his first and would not be his last. Appearance. No, he's still actually acting. He's actually in a film this year. Mm -hmm. film called Dance With Me. So Mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome. As I mentioned before, Ebera is um, lame. There. I'm sorry. (laughs) I said it. I'm not... You know, I'm sorry. He's lame. As far as giant monsters go, I know I should be more frightened of something with big pincers and all that stuff like that, but I've always just been like... You know, I'm sorry. I just, I don't see it. I don't see where the fear comes from. Um, Interestingly enough, going back to Takarada, mm-hmm. he did make an appearance in the Godzilla, uh, legendary Godzilla film, mm-hmm. but his scenes were cut. I know, that sucks. Um, which really does suck. That really um, sucks. He is listed in the movie credits, even though he did not appear. And it would be interesting if they get him into the new one; would be nice. Yeah, so. I don't know if they if they or if they added his stuff in like a deleted scene. That would be nice. Yeah. The one thing that I think is the one thing about this film that I do find interesting is that they do have an underwater fight scene between Godzilla and Ebera, which makes sense. Um, it's it's actually quite well done, <coughs> um, and I felt so bad for for Nakajima. Um, because I always felt bad for Nakajima anyway, because being in the Godzilla suit, while it must have been an enormous honor, it was probably also a nightmare sometimes and super duper crazy hot. Well, we know that. Uh, Wasn't he in the suit where he accidentally stomped on something and tripped and fell? Was I think, that him? I yeah. I think so, yeah. I think it was. Um. That's coming up in a movie in the next few days. He also, when, when they did the underwater stuff, which they, um... They they filmed it in an aqua uh, uh, wa- an aquarium and then filmed it through and they filmed that through the glass of the aquarium with the suit actors. Uh, Nakajima had to wear a wetsuit. Mm-hmm. So now think about that: you're wearing a wetsuit <coughs> inside, inside this the big costume. rubber thing. Oh, good man. grief! That man deserved a medal. Um, it it's not bad as, as Godzilla movies go. It, it's really kind of, like I said, it's it's really weird because it does kind of vacillate between Godzilla being helpful without meaning to and then Godzilla being a pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's really weird. It's it's a very weird film in that respect, yeah. I think. Tomorrow, we will dip into that forbidden area that nobody wants to go into. We're not talking about hentai fanfic on this show. No, it's we're a not. Family we're show. talking about the introduction of Minya. You know, you're just me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Son of Godzilla tomorrow on the 31 Days of Godzilla, coming to you from Subject Cinema, E Cinema One, and Kaiju Corner. If you <laughs> haven't listened to Kaiju Corner yet, please subscribe. It's five dollars a month on our Patreon. You get Kaiju Corner and our two other shows that haven't premiered yet: Freeze Frame and Film Focus, and our Film Flash. I think our review show, and uh, plus lots of other perks. And now that they're transitioning this week to a membership site, there's going to be some other stuff going on uh, over the next week. So we hope you'll come over and join us over there because we could certainly use your support. Don't forget to spread the word about our miniseries and also our Avengers Endgame miniseries if Mm -hmm. you have any Avengers fans that didn't get to hear it. And um, lots more is coming where uh, where that comes from. And it's all from your friends 
at PNR Networks. Mm-hmm. Until tomorrow, I'm T.C. Kirkham. I'm Kim Brown. For the Big G, Tokyo Town Stomp Down. Let's keep stomping. I feel like sleeping. You've been listening to the Big G Tokyo Town Stomp Down. From Subject Cinema, find your corner at ecinema1.com. Podcasting's choice from coast to coast, continent to continent, right here 24 7. The NR